This is a standard large chicken egg from the grocery store. And this is an ostrich egg from our friend Jose's farm. We also get regular chicken eggs from him every few weeks and they come in all different sizes and colors. So let's get back to the ostrich egg. This one weighed in at two pounds, nine ounces, which is just over two and a half pounds. And you'll see later when we weigh the eggshell that the shell weighs seven ounces. And here's the regular store chicken egg. This one weighs in at 2.2 .2 ounces, quite a bit of difference. It's generally accepted that one ostrich egg is the equivalent of 24 chicken eggs. This one's just a bit on the smaller side, weighing about the same as 17 or 18 regular eggs. Or you can just imagine what might fit in a standard McDonald's Happy Meal box. I'm gonna let this sit out for at least an hour as I make the other components for our Loco Moco. Loco Moco is a classic Hawaiian dish made of four main components. A base layer of rice, preferably a sticky white cow rose or sushi type. A deliciously seasoned beef patty cooked to your preferred doneness, which in my case means medium rare with an outer char. A savory gravy made from the beef's pan drippings. And finally, the egg. A normal mortal sized loco moco will have one or two eggs on top. But today we were gifted with this glorious ostrich egg. So let's see if we can science this into a giganto loco moco. The burger patty will take the longest time to cook, so let's start there. Going with the idea that we need to upsize our loco moco by 17 to 24 times, I'm thinking five pounds of beef should work. Since I'm already nervous about ruining the first and maybe only a ostrich egg I may ever have, I don't want to overcomplicate any of the other components, so I'm using one of my go-to seasonings, McCormick's Grill Mates Hamburger Seasoning. The label says to use one tablespoon per pound of meat, but I'm calling an audible and adding a couple extra, so about a half of this 2.75 ounce container. I'm trying not to overwork the meat here, just gently tossing it around with the seasoning. I'm planning to cook this in a 12 inch cast iron skillet, so I form the patty in the same sized shallow pan on a sheet of parchment paper which will make it easier to turn out later. Patting it down into a uniform shape in the pan. By the way, I preheated the skillet in the oven to 400 degrees so that the meat would have a good sizzle when I turned it out into the skillet. Then we're gonna flip it out into our hot cast iron skillet. Whew, I was worried I'd miss. And on this side, I wanna form a little bit of an indentation because this is where the egg is gonna sit on top. So I'll insert meat thermometer and then place it into the 400 degree oven for 10 to 15 minutes. Then turn it down to 350 and let it go until it reaches about 145 degrees. Steve helped me lift this into a resting tray because we don't want the fat and juices to suck back into the meat. We want to use the juice and drippings to make our gravy. Covered the meat with foil and then gave it a blast with a kitchen torch later on to get some color on top. The burger patty ended up taking about 40 minutes in the oven. So during that time I did a little bit of cleanup and also some more prep. So we're chopping up one large red onion and eight ounces of baby bella mushrooms that I'm going to use for the gravy. And I also chopped up a big bunch of scallions to use as a garnish on top. We probably won't use all of it, but I do love having extra ready to go for other dishes. So here's how I made the gravy. First I scooped out the bigger pieces of protein scum. Don't worry about the littler bits. When it starts bubbling, I'll add the onions and mushrooms and let them stew a bit. The drippings from the meat patty have both water and fat, so I wanted to evaporate the water away, leaving only the fat. You'll see how the mushrooms brown and the onions caramelize as the water evaporates. Now we add a thickener. I've measured out one cup of all-purpose flour, but I'm pretty sure I won't need all of it. I just want to add enough to match with the fat in the pan and form a tasty brown roux. 
The roux will continue to darken the longer you cook it, so it's up to you how dark you want it to be. Or you can add some other ingredients later that'll help darken the gravy if you like it. Three quarter cups so far, and that looks pretty good for me. So it's time to add other liquids. A few tablespoons of soy sauce, I probably used about a quarter cup here, and some water, which I've pre-boiled in my kettle. Whisking and stirring continually, adding hot water until the gravy is as thick as you like. Just make sure you keep whisking because you don't want anything to get stuck to the bottom of the pan. Taste along the way and season as you go. You can always add more liquid if you want to thin out your gravy, but this looks really good to me. I'm going to let this sit on the side and reheat it just before assembly and make sure to stir it up so that you can clear up that top skin that's going to form. The rice is the easiest component in this video as I've cooked it so many times in so many different ways. Use your rice cooker or an instant pot, as I'm doing, and add three and a half cups of washed Calrose or sushi rice. I like to add one teaspoon of salt per cup of rice and also one tablespoon of rice vinegar per cup. Then I'll add in an equal amount of water to rice, so three and a half cups of water. This is gonna cook for four minutes on high with a 10 minute natural release, which gives us the perfect amount of time to open and cook our egg. So, this is the first time we're doing this, trying to open this egg, and I've seen people do it with a hammer, I've seen people take a saw, I've seen people do different things. Got a couple bowls here to catch the yolk and or the white, I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do. Now what I'm thinking is, I'm gonna use this sharp implement and I'm going to try to find like a little pour and then just kind of apply pressure to there and then kind of work my way around as we go. Okay, Doc. All right, so anyway, oh, I should put something under it in case if it spills. All right, everybody, ready to do this? All right, we're gonna go. Let's try. Oh, got a little chip there. Oh, look at that. <laughs> this is so scary. Look at the yolk. I just really don't want to break the yolk. I'm scared. And turn that one on. That's all right. It's okay. You got this angle for you. Oh. Okay, squishy. Oh my gosh, it's so weird. Go return to where I came from. Right, I'm gonna try to pour it into here. Give me a second to get back there. Okay. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Oh, you know what? I'm gonna weigh that egg. Look at that. Wow. That's a big boy for sure. How am I gonna separate this and this? I don't wanna separate it fully. I just don't want as much white in our egg. What do you think? That's enough, right? Yeah. Okay. 
Wow. Is that a piece of eggshell? At least it's big. You'll find it easily. It's a piece of eggshell. Okay. And, <laughs> just for the sake of science, for the sake of the sake, I want to get a picture of it on my phone with that. That's the picture I'll send Jose. Okay, so this is just over seven ounces. The whole egg together inside the shell was two pounds and nine ounces. So there's seven ounces of shell, so that's a two pound, two ounce egg. The actual edible parts of the egg. maybe four tablespoons. This is our biggest non-stick pan. <laughs> Alright, All right, here we go. Don't break, don't break. The, the egg white is actually um, actually starting to set up a little bit. And now we finally get to put the whole thing together and I cannot wait to try this. I got the biggest platter I could find in the back of my pantry. The bottom layer is the steaming hot sticky rice to spread it out as evenly as possible. Then I pour over a few big spoonfuls of our mushroom gravy. Next is the giant five pound hamburger patty. Our team lift worked out a lot easier the second time around. And another smothering of gravy. And finally, the egg. Beautiful, just beautiful. A handful of fresh chopped scallions, and we're done. It's ready to try. I'm gonna cut it. I'm gonna cut it on this side. Okay. Welcome, welcome. It's kind of a hot mess anyway. <laughs> oh, look at this. Look at this lava flow. Look at this lava flow in there. Piece though, I mean, come on. That looks good. Here, I'm gonna take a bite. Thank <laughs> you. 
Here we go. <laughs> that is so good. <laughs> That's really good. Well, okay. That piece of egg. That's good. I'm gonna cut a piece for you. Bigger version of Hawaii. <laughs> you like it? It's awesome. And this is great. I'm gonna go, go over there and eat it. <laughs> The egg itself tasted like a chicken egg, but a lot more intense because it's richer and fattier. Steve said that a better way to describe it is that a chicken egg tastes like an ostrich egg, but weaker. It makes sense since chicken eggs are only about 10% fat, whereas an ostrich egg is about 45% fat. The Locomoco turned out to be really delicious, but there are a couple things I do wish I'd done differently. I definitely should have used only half the amount of meat. A two to two and a half pound patty pressed down a little thinner would have made a better proportion of meat to egg to rice. Oh, and the only thing I forgot to do that I had planned was to bring out the sriracha. I mean, honestly, who eats eggs without sriracha? That rice though, it was perfectly seasoned and just the right amount of sticky for the dish. Adding just a small amount of salt and rice vinegar can make a huge difference in making plain white rice more than just a supporting actor. Try it the next time you make a pot of rice. Full disclosure, there's only two of us here, but none of that loco moco went to waste. We ate up the pieces that we cut for the video, and then I deconstructed the layers and stored the egg, meat, and rice in separate containers in the fridge. We ended up with a two and one quarter quart container of rice and two same size containers of meat. I poured the little bit of extra gravy over the meat and the remaining egg went into a separate shallow container. We made several different meals from the leftovers over the next 10 days, including smaller locomocos and burgers. I also used some of the meat to make a meat sauce for pasta, and I used the last bit of rice to add to a Korean tofu stew. And remember the extra egg white? It measured out to three cups total, and I used it to make up a huge batch of vanilla meringue cookies that turned out amazingly awesome. This was only the second time I'd ever tried to make a meringue, and I was actually impressed with myself. The first time I tried a few months ago was a complete disaster. We don't need to talk about that one, though. Anyway, I found my star tip after I made these, but I think they're still pretty as smooth cookies made with a rounded tip. We had a lot of fun making this video, and it took about two and a half hours of actual recording time once I came up with the idea of what to do with the egg. Thanks to Steve for helping me with recording, and special thanks to Jose for giving us the egg in the first place. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything, and you can always change your mind later. Leave a comment below on what you would have done if you'd had an ostrich egg. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.